Okay, and welcome to March allotment tour. Um, we we'll talk about COVID-19, coronavirus, um, at the end, but obviously that's making a big difference to what's being done and what can be done at the moment. Uh, but as you can see, most of lot one have, has been dug over now. The garlic's still doing okay. I put a second lot of raw beans in. I'm concerned more about the wind at the moment because there's a couple of it's uh, broke at the stems. And uh, everything else is pretty much the same, apart from the kale, which I've just harvested the last of. And on plot two, it's just this little area here that hasn't been dug at the end. All the rest has been dug. The raspberries, it's been cleared. Um, I've also uh, edged the path down the middle between my two plots and I've used some free timber, old decking, and put board it all down that side there to tidy that up. The strawberries are doing this, the same, we've got some uh, early cabbages there coming up, and the kale, as I said, I'll be harvesting the last of that over the next few days. And uh, including the florets, which taste all right as well. I've put the greenhouse back up after patching it up because it got took down in the storm. I've planted my first cup two crops, which is uh, Boltardi beetroot. Uh, I've just took the cover off, but I've keeping the cover on for a little while. And some of the herbs, there's a the lemon balm's doing okay. It's bringing into life. Sage is bringing into life. Fennel's starting to come back to life. You've got, so I've got a load of pansies I've got done from last year. Got to go out. Some for my mum and some for me. Obviously thyme and parsley's doing fine. And there's some more pots with some uh, blue geranium in. Talking of which, Here's a big clump of it, springing into life again. I've also got the iris, which I, again I broke up and put in a few different clumps. In the unfinished cold frame is some spinach. I haven't put the top on, top on because uh, in a short while the top would be coming off anyway. Um, and obviously, as we spoke at the beginning of the video, there's some issues in that, so um, I'm just going to leave it open like that. And when I can get some materials, there'll be another one going here, and there may even be a third one. And here, the red current is starting to leaf up. And under that cover there is a new um, couple of blackberry bushes I put in last year. That are half hardy, so I've covered it just in case. Um, excuse the light, but the uh, I don't mind the light actually. <laughs> and the raspberries are yeah starting to leaf up. Now in polytunnel one, one thing you'll notice different is a screen door. Got a few touching touching up to do. There's a little hole here. I'll soon sort that out and I've got to fill a gap at the bottom. But that's one of the screen doors in. There's another one that's obviously going to go in that end. In uh, in Polytunnel 1 now I've done some planting. My first planting actually in the Polytunnel. Just till the tomatoes and all that come. And what we've got is we've got a few rows of radishes. Then we've got some winter density lettuce, Navara. I think it's Navara or Nirvana. That's a new one for me, so I'll put up a caption if it's wrong. But I think it's Navara. Green oak leaf, Lola Rosa. Right. And on the shelf, we've got uh, a main crop of pea. Uh, one I did last year, I had some more seeds. Got sugar snap peas that I did last year. They're both only three to two or two to three feet high. My second lot of um, radish. 
Uh, got some chamomile down there. A new one for me, Oregon uh, peas. I'll put a label on what exactly they are. Can't remember off the top of the head the full name. And uh, down there, um, I had uh, a load of there's winter density and Lola Rosso, which I um, bricked out and they're growing in modules in the greenhouse. I'll show you them in a minute. They're just some extras that I had. Uh, down there we've got perpetual spinach, red kitten spinach, Grenoble red lettuce, and there's lavender down there. And here, oak leaf, green oak leaf lettuce. Again, I pricked out a load which are in the greenhouse and uh, we just harvest these ones as um, lovely fresh baby ones. We've got some pansies, two types, and then we've got some kaolettes. That's new for me this year. Oh, some early um, tomatoes, uh, money maker and black cherry which is uh, my favourite so far and uh, got some more early tomatoes a couple of cucumbers a second lot of snapdragon flowers because I got given a load and uh, here is um, some ladybird poppies which I'm doing for someone And I did some cuttings of the black currant last year, and as you can see, a few of them have taken. Here's the three raspberry plants I bought last year, and as you can see, they're starting to bud. The apple tree, again, starting to bud. But I'm hoping this, these frosts won't come out too much. One rhubarb and another one, and uh, that tree. I was going to replace that. What I'm going to do is put a, put another apple tree in its place because, as you can see, it's fallen over and it's never going to grow right. But uh, money and all kinds of things meant I didn't quite get it done, so it'll have to be the end of this year. I'll get that done. Um, over there, we've got my third batch of. Um, Broad beans, that's a different one. I think it's called Crimson Flowered. I won it in the competition, so that's why I've got three batches of broad beans. Okay, we've got some. Uh, I harvested the seeds off my marigolds last year. There's some there, and there's some there. They're doing okay. Then we've got um, Alderman peas, which is another new one for me because one of the things I'm doing this year is growing different varieties to try. Now, that one, my intention is to grow them for shoots. I've never done that before. Uh, there's um, those trays in the uh, polygon of one of the lettuces I was on about, the ones I pricked out. Well, there's uh, the tray of uh, those 40 winter density. Doing really well, obviously. 40 uh, green oak leaf, doing well. And uh, 40 Lola Rosa, also doing well. And then we've also got a tray of onions, I'm trying to go from seed, never done that before. Not too, not doing too well at the moment, so I might do another batch, but we'll see. It's uh, not amazingly important, because I, actually I was eating a lot of onions, now I'm not. But uh, we'll give it a go. And the same as Polytunnel 1, you can see on Polytunnel 2, we've got a screen door in to keep the butterflies out. As much as I love them. I don't want to meet and everything. All the caterpillars more to the point. Right, so got the fleece nut. I just pin it at the top there, and at the back it's just pinned. So uh, it's just a bit easier. And again, I've got sticks. So all I've got to do is uh, take the pegs off and let it flop down gently and just rearrange it. Right. Well, what we got in here? Quite a lot. Got a second batch of um, Boltardi beetroot. We got some corn salad less. Navara lettuce at the back there, winter density, 
We've got a few trays of greyhound cabbage. One of, that's, well, say one off, that's my favourite cabbage. Love it. Going to grow a lot of it this year. Um, some more spinach. Missouri F1, I think, but I'll check. Uh, some more uh, greyhound cabbage. Run, red drum head. That's a new one for me. There's a couple of cauliflower, but they're not looking so good. Um, and then uh, just behind there, we've got uh, some red Russian kale, which is a new one for me. And then at the back, there's some hungry gut kale, and that's another new one for me. A couple of uh, Grenoble red, iceberg lettuce, snapdragons, flowers I potted up. Again, this, that's some free seeds I've got. More greyhound cabbage. Some Mizuna, never grown that before. More of the um, snapdragons that I haven't uh, potted up or anything yet. Now here we go to a, a big star, and that's the dwarf green curl kale, Mr. Fuddergills. And uh, I'll be growing a lot of that again this year, because especially through winter it's brilliant. And what's best about through winter with the kale, is you don't have to worry so much about the white fly. That's the only pain with it because I like to have it in smoothies but with the white fly I won't have it in smoothies I'll only have it cooked for obvious reasons because it's fine you just wash off the white fly um, if they're on there but they do leave marks and everything you know and it's just cooked I don't want to take any chances got calabrese now I grow broccoli never grown the calabrese before that's a new one for me more kale um, dwarf green kale kale and uh, some more red drum head cabbage, which is a, a new one for me if I didn't say before. Some all year round cauliflower. Um, I grew them last year, but I grew them late and the heads, um, they went a bit of a funny color, so I didn't get to eat any of them. But I've got plenty of other things. Some more dwarf green cow, cold cow, should I say. My second batch of summer sprouting purple broccoli because the first one, the one other time I forgot to fleece, they all died. The importance of fleecing. Now, then, ah, here we go. Now, we've got a couple of tubs of um, carrots, which oh, I do find is the easiest way to grow carrots, but there you go. And, uh, We've got another batch here. It's difficult for me to see the screen on the camera, so you have to forgive me if the light's not great. It's just stupid for me to see it. Now here, actually, along with the kale I've been harvesting since last year, these lettuce have been, uh, well, I've been harvesting from last year, but they were grown from last year, and I've just started to harvest them. You got, there's winter density, there's all kinds in there, Lola Rosa, I can't remember the name of the others, because it's a mixed bag. Under fleece, which I've just been leaving on at the moment anyway, is um, Swift Potatoes. There's a four in there. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, pretty much it. Anyway, so that's the, uh, the end of the uh, March allotment tour. Um, so let's quickly go over COVID-19. Now obviously, like a lot of countries, there's restrictions. Luckily, Mike Ago said within a few hours of bringing in the new restrictions that visiting your allotment was okay. It's a form of our exercise. And for three days I was digging up here and I can assure you that's exercise. <laughs> um, now, luckily I, uh, I'd already got most of my seeds last year that I needed the, of the stuff that I'd already grown. Earlier this year I'd already got the seeds of the new varieties, which is one of the things I wanted to do this year, was to grow some different varieties, as well as the ones I like to try. Um, and luckily I did that already, so I didn't have to worry about any shortage of seeds or anything. Um, um, the cold frame like I've already said I got that in but basically in a month's time the lid was going to come off so it wasn't much point doing a lid now obviously the restrictions are a bit more difficult because I don't well I do I can drive 
but I haven't got a vehicle. Obviously, a lot of the shops are shut now. So um, the plan is obviously as soon as I can to get them done. I'm probably going to do another. Might do another two, but what what will happen is effectively they will just become raised borders because I'll just take the lids off at certain times of year. So um, late autumn, the the, cover, the lids will go on, and then they will come off in the spring. And uh, so then I could I'll just grow less. But the good thing about it is having a handful of raised beds. Is it's actually quite easy to put mesh over like you saw earlier with the with the um, spinach now the reason I'm doing that with the spinach is actually because I had a little bit of an issue with um, leaf miner I think they call it beet leaf miner when you have it on spinach and chard and beetroot but anyway it's a leaf miner and uh, because you're eating the leaf obviously it's no good but um, the first batch I did last year was alright and the second batch got attacked so I'm hoping that might prevent because I can't remember I did whether it was a f uh, moth or a fly or whatever but it doesn't really matter so um, I think under the circumstances March I mean you can see in here absolutely full shelf I've got a full shelf pretty much in the polytunnel 1 the greenhouse is getting full there's stuff in the ground and I'm still harvesting from last year as well anyway um, it's all gone you know quite well under the circumstances um, I just hope that uh, like all of us that uh, the restrictions aren't needed to be increased because that will mean that things are getting better with the virus and it's being dealt with it's not spreading as much that's what we all hope and then um, hopefully in time because it's going to take time for things to get more back to normal movement we don't want to rush things because the last thing we want is for it to come back strong um, a second time so um, I'll just leave it at that and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the April allotment tour and hopefully we'll have some better news when it comes to the virus but uh, it's something you've got to talk about because it doesn't, it affects every part of your life and it obviously affects gardening but even if you're gardening in your back, in your back garden and not on an allotment although you ain't got to worry about restrictions you know there are some things that are going to be a bit more difficult to get and uh, but anyway there are thousands of people that have died it puts things into perspective I just uh, I wish you all the best keep safe keep away from people as best and as much as you can and I hope to see you in April and I hope that things have improved for all of us so you take care, bye